is uh, Sister Vendetta Ward, and she has worked really hard with the uh, KOGT uh, kids and dance and step, and so we just want to help them and, and praise God, and y'all give them a round of applause. Amen.
good drama, and it is, excites me to have the opportunity to come and share with you all this afternoon. Uh, one of my good buddies is Mike. We uh, play uh, football together at the University of Louisville, and Mike asked me to come out and, um, and share with you all some of the things that God has laid on my heart, some of the things that the Holy Spirit has laid on my heart, and I'm excited about having the opportunity to do that. Uh, I won't spend any time really on my introduction, okay, who I am, my name, the things that I've done. None of that stuff is really important, okay? The only thing that's important about me is that I have a relationship with Jesus Christ, okay? And I am saved by the blood that was shed for me on the cross on Calvary, all right? I tell people that about, about myself all the time. Who I am and the things that I've done have no importance about, uh, about my life at all, okay? That's the only thing that matters in my life. Today, just for the next 10, 15 minutes, I want to share with you some scripture, and it's my prayer that God will reveal himself to us through this word and uh, give us something that we can apply to our own lives and take and some of the fruit out of that and apply to our own lives and get some benefit out of that. Uh, today we're going to be looking, if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me and check the scripture out. It's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read that, and we're going to show a parallel here that I believe God is trying to show us in the way that we live our lives, in the way that we go about competition and those types of things. 
So here we go. Starting in verse 24, it says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you might win. Everybody knows, if you know anything about competition, that you have to do certain things in competition. If you want any shot at having a chance of success, you have to take some steps, some uh, procedure in order to set yourself up, put yourself in a position that you might have an opportunity and success to win. And the Bible tells us here that we should have that same approach, that same attitude in our life, that we should live our life in a way as if we're competing for a prize. Okay, now everybody knows in competition that everybody competes. Nobody likes to lose at anything, okay? Everything that you do, the Bible says, whether well, word or deed, do it with all your heart, okay? And so in competition, we do these things in order to win a prize. All right, let's go down to verse uh, 25. It says, everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Now, we talked about how in competition you do things to set yourself up in a, to be in a position to win. And we talked about how that parallel should be the same in the way that you live your life. The only distinction we find here in verse 25 is that in athletics, in competition, you're competing to win a prize or a trophy that will one day perish. In our Christian life, we're competing to win a prize that we will never lose. Eternal life with our Creator in heaven. Some of the things in competition that you might want to to do if you want an opportunity to win, you might do things like prepare. Okay, working on the fundamentals and the techniques of your craft, whatever it may be. It may be basketball. It may be football. It might even be chess. Okay, it doesn't matter. You have to work on the fundamentals and the techniques that will put you in a position to achieve success. And that same thing uh, lies in our Christian life. We have to make sure that we take the time necessary, what's required in order for us to have an opportunity and success. What does that look like? Well, that looks like this right here. The Word of God. The Word of God. This book has been given to us, inspired by God Himself, and it's profitable for teaching, for correction, and for training in righteousness. The way in which we are to go. Okay? Where to go, where not to go. Who to hang out with, who not to hang out with. How to respond to situations when somebody wrongs you. All the answers are right here. These are the fundamentals and the technique of a Christian lifestyle. The way that we are to live is right here. Okay? And when you have taken the time to prepare in athletics, you get to move to the next step, and that's dedication. Okay? Staying dedicated to the, to the task or the goal that is at hand. And that same thing lies true in your Christian life. Let's go down to verse uh, 26. It says, Therefore I run in such a way as not without aim. I box in such a way as not beating the air. Verse 27, but I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. So it's talking about that parallel. We're talking about a parallel between competition or athletics and our Christian lifestyle. And it talks about buffeting your body and making it your slave so that when times get hard, when the adversity comes, you won't quit. Okay? In athletics, we call it putting enough into the tank, investing enough into your body so that when you get in the fourth quarter or the last inning, you have enough to keep on going, to keep on pressing on towards that goal. In the Christian life, that looks like holding on to your faith when adversity comes. It looks like standing on the word of God when the world tells you that you should do it another way. It looks like saying no to temptation and those things when the world tells you it's great, saying no to it because I got more than the world could ever offer me right here. So those are the two things that, that we've looked at so far. We've looked at preparation. We've looked at dedication. And the third thing what I want to spend a little time on, about five, ten minutes, is knowing your opponent. 
okay? Some of the athletes in here, you know what that's all about. If you want any opportunity at beating the person that you're competing against, you have to know their strengths, their weaknesses, and how they're going to attack you. I want you all in here to know this evening that in our Christian life, we also have an opponent. Okay, we have an opposer. We've been talking about him all night. He is the enemy. Some of you call him Satan. You call him the devil. Whatever you want to call him, a snake in the grass. He is our enemy. And he is an opposer to what we're trying to do in this Christian life. He's a liar. He's a cheat. He's a thief. He is a deceiver. Okay, and a lot of people have a misconception about who the devil is or what he stands for. A lot of people have the devil mixed up. Okay, that's the worst thing that you could ever do for yourself. That's the worst position that you could ever put yourself in is not believing in what the devil comes to do. The Bible says that he comes to steal, kill and destroy. That's what the word says. And we have this. This illusion, this illustration that we have made about the devil that is totally wrong, okay? A lot of people look at the devil as this little red cartoon character with horns and a pitchfork that runs around in a blaze of fire trying to cause havoc in our lives. The Bible describes the devil as something far more uh, atrocious and, and devastating than that in, in 1 Peter 5, 8. It describes our enemy, the devil, as a roaring lion who is seeking any opportunity to devour you. You know, we, we take the devil and, and, and sometimes we even make him into something cute and cuddly. We'll take him and, and stuff him with, with this stuff and, and give him to our Valentine's on Valentine's Day like that's something cute. Okay? There is nothing cute about a lion who is seeking to destroy you. How many of you have ever seen on, on Animal Planet or Discovery Channel an African lion that gets a hold of some prey like a zebra or an antelope or something like that? Y'all ever seen that? Okay. Homeboy is not playing with whatever is in his mouth. Okay. That is not a game. You see the look in his eyes is a look of a stone cold killer. Okay, you see the gnarl in his mouth and his face are bare and exposed. He has blood on his mane and he is ripping whatever he has in his mouth from limb to limb. Okay, that is not a game. That is death. The only thing that he's thinking about is to kill and to eat. And we have that misconception about, about what the devil really is. The other thing that the devil is, another misconception that we have about the devil is that we do not know sometimes that the devil was actually created as an angel with an anointing of amazing wisdom. Okay, and he is smart. And he's going to come into this world. When he comes, he does not come with a two by four, friends. He doesn't come with a baseball bat. Okay, announcing that he's coming in to destroy you. And he would like nothing more than to keep you in the dark about his plan, about what he's trying to do, because he wants to trip you up. So he's not going to alert us to, to the fact that he's coming in for destruction. He is the, the master of deception. Okay, he is a serpent, he is a snake, and he is coming stealthily to kill. He has a plan to trap us up. You think about how you kill a rat. Okay? The conventional way that you kill a rat was with a mouse trap. But in the country where I come from in North Carolina, okay, we take little pieces of, of poison, a little poison pellet, and we wrap it up with chocolate, and we leave it on the floor overnight if we have a mouse or a rat. And that rat comes along at night after you've left that piece of chocolate out, and it comes and bumps into that chocolate and thinks, man, somebody that left me a piece of chocolate right here on the floor, my lucky day, right? And what happens is the smell of that chocolate starts to, to get in his nose and it starts to run his endorphins a little bit. Okay, and it starts to get him, get him excited and get him going and he starts to nibble on that chocolate a little bit and it tastes good to him. And the chocolate starts to, to get into his system and it starts to make him get excited and he's eating on his chocolate. And before long, he's eating over half the chocolate and he has no idea that he's ingesting poison. Okay, and that poison slowly starts to creep into a system and take course of what it was supposed to do. And it starts to break down his body and eat at his bones and break down his organs and it's taking course of what you put it in there to do. 
And what that rat thought was that he had a free piece of chocolate. It looked good. It tastes good. He couldn't resist it because it's chocolate. It was, it was perfect to him. But before he knows it, he's ingested that chocolate and it's killed him. All right? And he's laying flat on his back and somebody's sweeping him in a dustpan and throwing him out back. Friends, don't you know that the devil deals with us the same exact way? Deception, temptation, it's not going to come in a package that says, warning, this is bad for you. It's going to come and it's going to be masked like that pretty girl that you see on television. It's going to be masked in that car that everybody holds on, on such high esteem. I just got to have that. Okay, and you spend this life, your entire life trying to fill your soul, that hole that you have in your heart with stuff, with material things that the devil has put in this world to deceive us. Yeah. And what it's going to leave us is just like that rat who was deceived by the piece of chocolate and he couldn't resist it and it left him on his back in the kitchen floor. In this game, we, we talked about the comparison between athletics and competition and our Christian walk with, with God every day. And we talked about the how everybody runs the race, but only one person can win. Don't you know that life's race is not one that we can do over? In athletics, we get plenty of opportunities to play another game. I love U of L with everything that I have. We just lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament yesterday. Unless the Lord returns before next year, U of L will get another opportunity at playing in the NCAA tournament. But in life's race, you only get one shot. Just one. You only get one. And let me tell you something about life's race. In life's race, when you get on lap three or four, there's not going to be somebody that comes out with a white flag and says, you only got one lap left. One lap left. Make sure that you run this one correctly. No. And when the life's race is over, the last lap is going to come, and we're going to cross the finish line, and we're going to stand in front of a judge. And that judge is going to judge us on the way we ran our race. Did you take the time to prepare on the fundamentals and the technique? My word that I have given you, my light that I have given to lighten up your pathway. Did you stay dedicated? And did you realize the devil for what he was and call him a liar to his face and resist all of the temptation that's out there? I'm talking to the young boys and the young girls in this room right now. Don't you know that the devil's temptation is real? Amen. And it's alive and it's all around you. It's in the televisions. It's, in, it's on the internet. It's in the newspapers, in the magazines. And he has masked these things to want to, to make you go after him with everything you have. It's that piece of chocolate. Don't be fooled. Boys and girls, please don't be fooled. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for having the opportunity to open up your word and apply some of the fruit to our lives. God, if, there, if there's anybody in here who's struggling with something, God, I pray that you prick their hearts to come in to ask somebody who has the answers, somebody that can lead them to your word that you've given us for those things, for the dark times, for the uncertainty. God, if there's anybody in here who doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, who doesn't trust and believe in what you did on the cross for our sins, God, I pray that you, you have them ask somebody. God, I pray for each and every person in this room that you protect them as they go out into the community, as they go back to their school, that they can walk as a light in a dark world. God, you've called us to live in this world but not live like the world, and I just pray that you give them the, the confidence and courage to do that. Your word says that you have given us a spirit of courage and valor, God, not one of uh, fear and timidity. So I pray for each and every person in this room for their courage and for their salvation. And it's in your precious son's name that we pray. Amen.